verse three of Rock of Ages says, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, wash me savior or I die. In the third verse, the hymn writer, Top Lady, acknowledges his own spiritual bankruptcy and, and clings to the cross of Christ as his only hope for salvation and sanctification. The line, nothing in my hand I bring, represents our utter and complete dependence on God and his grace for salvation. And it acknowledges that we come to God with nothing of our own merit that can contribute to our salvation. As I said, there's nothing we can do except believe that will bring us into God's grace. It's his mercy and his grace that saves us. Our belief in Jesus, none of our own works. Yes, we should. Sh our lives should change when we come to him. But he will work that in us. Don't think that you have to wait until you're good enough to come to him. He will do the work in you. Clinging to the cross symbolizes faith in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ as the sole basis of salvation. It represents trust in Christ's atoning sacrifice as the only means of being saved. Now, the metaphor or metaphors of nakedness and helplessness are used to express the spiritual poverty of humanity without God's grace. Dress and grace symbolize the righteousness and assistance that come from God, covering our sin and insufficiency. The fountain refers to Christ's sacrificial blood seen as a purifying fountain that, that cleanses us from our sins. Identifying ourselves as foul underscores the acknowledgement of sinfulness and the need for purification. We have to admit first that, that, that we need it, that we are bankrupt without it. We need salvation. We need Christ's sacrificial blood to purify us and to cleanse us. Because the, the urgent plea at the last line of this verse says, wash me savior or I die. Now that highlights the critical nature of salvation. It says that without the cleansing and saving grace of Christ, Spiritual death is inevitable. We are human. Nothing we do short of believing in Jesus can save us. We can't make ourselves good enough. Only he can do that. Only by God's grace and his mercy can we become righteous and cleansed. This, this verse and this song captures the, the essence of Christian humility and the doctrine of salvation through grace or by grace through faith. It it vividly portrays the sinner's approach to God. 
empty-handed, in need of covering, support, and cleansing. Through these, these vivid images, Augustus Top Lady illustrates the profound truth that salvation is entirely the work of God's grace, not human merit. Nothing we can do, not human deeds, not our acts, only by God's grace. In Titus 3, 5, 4 through 5, in the New Living Translation, it says, but, I love that, but, when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. And then in Hebrews 4.16 in the, in the New Living Translation, it says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Now, Psalm 51.2 is a prayer in the New Living Translation also. It says, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. You see, as we recognize our need for cleansing, as we recognize our guilt, we can ask Jesus to cleanse us, to let his blood that he shed on Calvary to cleanse us and to purify us from our sin. Once we ask for forgiveness, we are covered by his blood. Our sins are no longer seen by God. He forgives us. We can't comprehend that as humans because we can't forget. But God willingly forgets our sin when we ask him to forgive us. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have to continue to ask him to forgive us because We all mess up. So we need to go ahead and, and acknowledge that and acknowledge that, Lord, I, I messed up. I'm, I'm so sorry. Forgive me for what I did. Forgive me for that, that dirty thought that just ran through my mind. Forgive me for that foul language that just came out of my mouth. Forgive me for that, for that thought of evil against that person, that, that, that desire to cheat, that desire to do whatever it is that, that displeases God. That's what sin is. But once we acknowledge that, we can acknowledge that and ask for forgiveness. And sometimes we have to do it many times a day because guess what? We're human. We mess up. But God's there Jesus is there with his blood to cover us once again, to keep us covered in his grace and his mercy. And he will forgive us of our sins because he's God and he loves us. He created us. He wants a relationship with us. Purify me from my sin. Cleanse me from my guilt. He's there to help us when we need him most. Now, verse four of Rock of Ages <clears throat> kind of begins a little morbid, but th this is the lyrics. It says, whilst I draw this fleeting breath, when my eye strings break in death, when I soar through tracks unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. This final verse contemplates mortality and the afterlife, expressing a, a desire 
to remain hidden in Christ through death and into eternity. The opening lines of this verse are a poetic way to describe the transient nature of life, emphasizing that every breath is temporary and pointing towards the inevitability of death. We're all going to die. Unless, unless Jesus comes back before we die, we're all going to die. But that's only our bodies. Our souls don't have to die. You see, the next line imagines the, the soul's journey after death, venturing into the afterlife or tracks unknown. It suggests a transition from the known world to the heavenly realm. And it goes on to visualize and anticipate standing before God in the final judgment where we hope to find mercy through Christ. And that's, we can have that assurance if we, if we have asked for forgiveness from God. We've asked Jesus into our hearts and we believe that he is the son of God and he died for us to forgive us of our sins and that he rose again. His blood covers those sins. But again, we need to let him cleanse us completely. We need to let him to continually cleanse us, to continually forgive us of, of, of the things that, that we do where we falter because we all do. The hymn closes by repeating the refrain from the, from the first verse, reinforcing the theme of finding refuge in Christ. It's a, a plea for protection and salvation that extends beyond death seeking eternal safety in God's presence. Because if we believe in Christ, if we have given our hearts to him, given our lives to him, when we leave this earth, when our final breath is drawn on this earth, we will be with him in glory. I can't wait for that day personally, but obviously if I'm still breathing and I'm still here, God has a plan and he has a purpose. But I am looking forward to that day, and you can too. 2 Corinthians 5.1 in the New Living Translation says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. Now, where it talks about human hands is talking about, well, the facts of life, the, how babies are made. I'm not going to go into that, but God still makes us, but it takes, <coughs> he uses humans to create us <coughs> and to create these bodies that we have, excuse me, <coughs> But in other words, it goes on to say later that he's not going to leave us naked. These earthly bodies are temporary. Our soul is eternal. Where is your soul today? Have you given your soul? Have you given your heart? your life to Jesus. If you have, praise God, I will see you in paradise. If you have not, I encourage you, seek him. Let him fill your, your heart and your mind and your, your life with himself. 
Ask him to forgive your sins. Ask him to come into your life. Because it is only by the grace of God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, that we are saved. Now, to summarize Rock of Ages, this hymn beautifully encapsulates key tenets of Christian faith. Humankind's sinfulness and inability to save itself. The sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice for salvation. And the believer's continual dependence on God's grace. Through vivid imagery and heartfelt pleas, the hymn explores themes of human sinfulness, divine refuge, the inefficiency of human efforts and the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice. Now let's look at some of these themes. Divine Refuge. The hymn begins with, with Christ as a protective rock, offering shelter and safety to us as believers this imagery underscores the reality of God as a sanctuary for those seeking salvation. He is the only place to find salvation. The next key theme is human insufficiency. Now, Top Lady emphasizes that no amount of human effort or labor or zeal or repentance can atone for sin or fulfill the demands of God's law. This theme highlights the futility of relying on our own deeds for salvation. But the next theme is Christ's sufficiency. Because you see, the central message of, of this hymn is the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice on the cross through his death, we find the double cure for sin. And what is that double cure? It's the atonement that spares us from God's wrath. And it's the cleansing that purifies us from sin. Only God's blood, only Christ's blood on the cross did that for us. It spares us from God's wrath and cleanses us and purifies us from sin. Now we go on to the next theme, which is total reliance on grace. The repeated calls to hide myself in thee and the pleas for cleansing and salvation reiterate our total, total dependence on God's grace. The imagery of, of coming to Christ naked, helpless, and foul illustrates the complete surrender and faith in, in God's mercy and grace. But there's another theme to this song. It's the eternal hope. The final verse contemplates mortality and the afterlife, expressing a hopeful anticipation of eternal salvation and the, the desire to remain in Christ's refuge beyond death, through judgment, and into eternity. That's where our hope is. That's that an anticipation of eternal life, eternal salvation that I was talking about earlier. We can have that. We truly can. So, Rock of Ages is a, is a, is a hymn of comfort and assurance, offering a, a powerful expression of Christian 
recognition of sin. It's, it's a journey from our, our recognition of, of sin and our, in, in our insufficiency and our need for salvation to the hopeful assurance of eternal life through faith in Christ. It is a prayer. It is a declaration of faith and it is a meditation on the profound truths of Christian doctrine. And it all comes together encapsulating our dependence on God's grace for salvation and the eternal hope found in Jesus Christ. Now, it remains a cherished hymn in Christian worship. We still sing this song today. And it remains that for its doctrinal depth and its expression of humble faith and and trust in God's provision through Jesus Christ. Now, I once again want want to reiterate to you the urgency, the need, the desperation to come to him. Look around you at the signs of the times. Read the Bible. Things happening today, you can see that were prophesied. We may not have much time and either, even if God chooses to, to wait longer, we do not have assurance of when our last breath will be. We don't know the time when he's going to call us home. So why take a chance? Of not being ready. So many people think that you can't have fun as a Christian. That, oh, it's boring. But I tell you what, I could have, you can have so much fun. You don't have to be drunk. You don't have to be high. There is a, there is a spiritual. High. And there is a, where we find such joy and such fun in Christ. God gave us laughter. He gave us all of this beauty in this world. And he gave us Jesus, his son, as our atonement for our sins. His blood covers our sins, cleanses us, makes us pure so we can come to God And be accepted by him through the blood of Jesus. We can find forgiveness. We can find hope. We can be assured of our eternal life with him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this this time of this study. Lord, I thank you for giving these lyrics to Augustus Top Lady so long ago. Lord, I thank you that that you've kept it alive, that you've kept it relevant to our lives. Lord, because it's scripture and it's scripture is is living and breathing and ongoing. Lord, that we can sing these words and we can Sing it as a prayer to you and as a declaration of our faith in you, as a request for your forgiveness and as an acknowledgement of of our insufficiency in our own works. Lord, help us to remember that it's not by our works or how good we think we can be that make us right with you. It's only by our belief and our faith in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross that makes us right with you and helps us to receive your grace and your ongoing grace. Lord, I ask that that you'll touch the hearts and the lives and the minds of those who are listening to this. Lord, that they will seek you Lord, if they know you, that they will 
draw closer to you and they will seek your will more. Lord, if they don't know you, that they will seek your forgiveness. They will seek your salvation. Lord, they'll seek the cleansing that comes from Jesus' blood and the belief in, in him. Lord, that, that you will draw them to you. Lord, I ask that you'll be with each one, that you'll touch their lives, that you will bless them. Lord, protect them, guide them. In your name, Lord. Amen. I thank you for joining me in this study today. I hope you got something from Rock of Ages. It is such a wonderful hymn. Now, if you have not visited my website at phyllisjolliffe.com, I encourage you to do so. There will be a link around somewhere for it. I have poems and articles and links to my original songs and my store uh, with designs like this one, God's in Control. He truly is. Um, I have multiple designs adding things all the time, including things that go along with Voices of Worship, Hymnology Unveiled. So check it out. I encourage you to, to share this with your friends. Make comments Share this with others. Be bold in your faith. If this touched you, share it. And I will see you in the next study. God bless.